When you want to advise someone about good or bad, you know, stay away from the bad or do good, you've got to look at what's more important to talk about, what's more important to raise. You've got to use priorities. So, for example, the fard, compulsory things, are more important than the sunnahs. The sunnah is more important than the nafil, which is recommended, voluntary stuff. The voluntary is more recommended than the mubah. Mubah is more recommended, the, 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 sorry, voluntary is more recommended than customs and cultures, because in Islam there's customs. For example, if uh, a particular dress code in a community uh, or a tribe is what's considered beautification, some people they go, no, you have to wear this and you have to dress like that. that that's not the priority right now. Okay, so you've got to focus on the priorities. What are the priorities? What's the most important thing? And for example, that brother, as I gave the example, of coming to the masjid wearing an earrings and tattoos. What's the priority there? Is the priority to rush and tell him to take his earring off? No. Or a sister walks in and maybe her hijab is not covering her neck or loosely. Is, is, is my priority to go up and talk about hijab? Or is, and if she's among the women, of course. Or is my priority to get to know and make her feel welcome to this masjid and then slowly on the side, maybe give her little pieces of advice out of love and care? Yani, I want to recite an ayah in the Qur'an, and I think all of us know this ayah, in Surah Sabbih Isma Rabbika Al-A'la. The verse which, which says, فَذَكِّرْ إِن نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ فَذَكِّرْ إِن نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ Four words. Some people say to me, how can I understand the whole Qur'an? Ya, if you just take four words and try to understand them, that will change a, a quarter of your life maybe. Listen to this. فَذَكِّرْ إِن نَفَعَتِ الذِّكْرَ uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surrender good counsel if good counsel will avail. Advise good advice if the advice will benefit. Yeah, we recite it in Surah Sabbih Sabrabika. Fadakir in nafati zikra. In in is what we call shartiya, which means a condition. Don't do that unless it's that. So there's, we have two words like similar, we say either and in. Either is a little bit more flexible. In is conditional. When you hear the word, when you read in, it means it's conditional. If this, then do that. So Allah says, give good advice, render good counsel, if good counsel will avail. The scholars gave two meanings to that. The first ones they said, we are giving you, a, it's the first commentator said that Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, we are giving you a simple code of law, which is easy to practice and act upon. And the second sentence to mean, admonish, meaning remind the people if reminding is useful. The second view, which makes more sense to the structure and theme of the verse, it's like Allah is saying this, and I'll just read the commentary. O Prophet, we do not want to put you to any hardship concerning the preaching of Islam. By demanding that you should make the deaf to hear and the blind to see the way. But we have appointed an easy way for you, which is this. Give admonition, reminders, when you feel that the people are inclined to benefit. When you know they might listen, they're more inclined to benefit and more inclined to listen. As to who is inclined to benefit by the reminder and who is not, this is, this you can only know through general preaching, general preaching. Instead of going personally to a person, brothers and sisters, if you have a situation where you can talk in public or in general or in a gathering without pointing to a particular person or naming a person in particular is the best way to start any kind of da'wah and reminding. That's how the Prophet used to do, is to start general. And then, therefore, you should continue your general preaching, but your object should be to search out those from among the people who will benefit by it and adopt the right way. You catch them, you start getting to know them. Once you get to know a person, you get to be closer, you're able to talk to them. Just look at yourself. Always look at yourself and think, would I be comfortable and listen if that person approached me the way that I'm thinking of approaching him? Think like that. Before I, before I advise you, my father, my father always told me this when I was a kid, because I was a bit more fiery back in my youthful days. Haram, haram, this, can't do this. Can't do that. I used to create havoc up in the village in Lebanon, 14 years old. I once turned the whole village against me. <laughs> well, and I thought I was Prophet Ibrahim, but then I realized the Prophet Ibrahim doesn't do it that way. But I thought, you know. Anyway, I was a child, 
But we learned the hard way. My father used to always tell me, son, before you advise anyone, no matter how good the advice is, no matter how pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you think he'll be with you, even if it's 100% correct, before you do it, think. Would you accept that approach if you approach them that way? And will it, benefit, will it bring something good or would it make it worse? Think. Think before you say. That's the meaning of da'wah. Inviting to the path of Allah and wanting good for other people, brothers and sisters, is really something that you love out of pleasure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means you've got to do it in the, in the best way. That's why Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنِّي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is there better of a caller than the one who calls to Allah and does righteous deeds themselves and says, I am among those who submit. This is the most precious call. So call to it in the best way. Cheap things, silly things, stupid things we call in the stupid way. But something so precious, the deen of Allah, we've got to call to it in the most precious and sensitive way.